Trinity friends. I am Miss Jen and I am here for Children's Chapel and I am so glad that you are here too. Now the first thing we do at Children's Chapel is look at our cross to see where in the church calendar we are. What season is it in the church calendar? What color do you see? It's green. So we're still in ordinary time. And the green reminds us to do what? That's right. This is the time for us to grow, just like this plant over here. The next thing we're going to do at our children's chapel is light our candles. We light our candles to remind us that this is a time to be peaceful. And we light our candles to remind us that God is always with us. Now, today we're going to mix things up a bit and we're going to sing a song to start. We're going to sing Rise and Shine. Let's get ready to listen to our Bible study a story and our prayers and sing a fun song to start. So Rise and Shine goes rise and shine and give God the glory, glory. You got it? We'll sing through it a couple times. You ready? Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory. Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory. Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, children of the Lord. Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory. Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory. Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, children of the Lord. Good job. That made me ready for Children's Chapel. How about you? Okay, let's go ahead and say our prayers. If you have your bulletin, you can grab it. If you don't, you can just follow along. The Lord be with you. And also with you. God be with me when I think. God be with me when I think. God be with me when I speak. God be with me when I speak. God be with me in my heart. God be with me in my heart. Oh dear God, let us never part. Oh dear God, let us never part. And next is the Apostles' Creed. This is where we say what we believe. We believe in God above. We believe in God above. We believe in Jesus' love. We believe in Jesus' love. We believe in the Spirit too. We believe in the Spirit too. Who comes to tell us what to do. Who comes to tell us what to do. Next is the prayers of the people. I'll say the prayer and then you're going to respond, Jesus, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders and everyone in our church. Jesus, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of our world so we can live in peace. Jesus, hear our prayer. We pray for our teachers to help us and those who are at home helping you learn during remote learning so we can learn and be more like you. Jesus, hear our prayer. We pray for our families that your love will fill our hearts. Jesus, hear our prayer. We pray for the boys and girls and their families who are hungry and we give thanks for those who help them. Jesus, hear our prayer. We pray for all people who are sick or sad. Jesus, hear our prayer. We pray for all people who have died. Jesus, hear our prayer. We pray you will be with us in all we do. Jesus, hear our prayer. Now, are there any special prayer requests today? You can type them in the comments, or you can say them out loud, or you can just say them in your heart. We continue to pray for doctors and nurses, and we pray for teachers and parents and students with school starting back up. I pray for each of you here at Children's Chapel today. We ask all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now it's time for the confession. This is when we say we're sorry for things we've done. Dear God, Dear God, I am sorry I have done things. I am sorry I have done things. I should not have done. I should not have done. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to forgive me. For hurting friends and those I love. For hurting friends and those I love. Please help me to do better. Please help me to do better. Thank you, God, for your love. Thank you, God, for your love. Amen. Amen. Excellent. Good job, guys. Now, today's Bible story 
comes from the book of Matthew again. We're still in the book of Matthew. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Matthew is the first gospel in the New Testament. And we're still in chapter 16. And we are going to start today with verse 24. Then Jesus spoke to his disciples. He said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must say no to themselves. They must pick up their cross and follow me. Hmm. They must say no to themselves. I wonder what that means. What do you think saying no to themselves means? I think it means to maybe stop thinking so much of myself and to be thinking of others. And then what do you think taking up your cross means? Hmm, that's what we're gonna talk about today. So this morning, when I was getting dressed and I put on my necklace, and what do you see on my necklace? I don't know if you can see it, but it's a cross. It's my Daughters of the King cross. Some of you have a Junior Daughters of the King cross. Now the cross made me think of today's lesson about carrying your cross, taking up their cross and following me, taking up my cross and following Jesus. Now, do you think just putting on this cross, just putting it on makes me a disciple of Jesus? I think it may be a little bit more than that. That would be a little bit easy. What about, have you seen people that have shirts, maybe a t-shirt that has a cross on it? Do you think if I just put on a t-shirt that has a cross and it tells everybody that I'm a Christian, that that's what Jesus meant by taking my cross and following him? I don't know. I think that sounds a little bit too easy also. Now, do you have any crosses around your house? I know we see a cross at church, and I found some crosses around my house. So I found this cross in my daughter's room, and she got it from a friend of ours when she was baptized. And I found another cross in my house. This cross was given to us when we moved. And on the back it says, we'll miss you. And it says from, it says love the Andrews family so that we would remember them and remember the relationships that we had. So there are crosses a lot in our lives when we are Christians. Do you think just having these crosses or the cross on my necklace, do you think that's what he means by taking our cross and following him? I don't know if that's what he means. I think all of these are really good reminders of Jesus and his grace and his forgiveness and his love. But I think we have to remember how Jesus lived. If he wants us to follow him, I think he wants us to live the way he lived. And how did Jesus live? He lived by loving everybody, everybody. He showed love to everybody, even the people who weren't very nice. And I don't know about you, but that's sometimes hard to do. It's easy for me to love my family. It's easy for me to love my friends. Now it's not so easy to love people who weren't very nice, but Jesus wants us to, because he did. Jesus also showed everybody forgiveness. And sometimes that's not very easy. So I think living like Jesus and loving everyone can be hard. And I think taking up our cross means following Jesus even when it's not always easy 
and doing those hard things. Loving when it's not so easy to love, forgiving when it's not so easy to forgive. I think that's what he means by taking up our cross and following him. Now, let's go ahead and say a prayer before we leave. I'll say the prayer and then we'll all say amen at the end. Dear God, we are thankful for the lessons that Jesus teaches us. Help us to love others even when it's hard. Help us to take our cross and follow him. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me for Children's Chapel today. Know that I love you. Know that God loves you. And I will see you very soon. Bye, everybody.